The first thing we see is our hero casting a powerful spell to defeat a shadowy figure that hovers in the air above him. He told the creature that he wasn't going to let it go unbothered after it had caused a lot of trouble in the past couple of years and after saying that Wim Abel who had been chosen as the court's magician defeated the shadowy creature and became widely known as the hero after solving the long lasting crisis of his empire, he became every lady's dream guy and the whole of Cyrus empire knew about him. However, things took a very sharp turn in the opposite direction when Abel was imprisoned on the accusations that he betrayed the emperor by defying his orders. That imprisonment also meant that he would be stripped of his title as the court's magician and all of his social power would be immediately and completely destroyed. Abel simply stood there unable to do anything as both of hands were chained and he just listened to what the new emperor had to say about him. Did I just say, Ab I mean Abel instead of Abel? I'm sorry, I'm really tired. I slept for four hours last night and Abel is how it would be pronounced on my language. So my brain tries to pronounce it on my language but I know the proper pronunciation is Abel. So I'm so sorry for messing it up. Anyways, back to the story. The new emperor explained how it wasn't him that appointed him as the court's magician and that the previous emperor had obviously made a grave mistake by doing so because Abel had the power which could shake the entire country if he wanted to and what was even more shocking, Abel was simply a commoner which the new emperor didn't like all that much. Abel realized that his situation wasn't looking very good and even though he tried to protest, he simply couldn't make himself utter any words as he was in a state of utter disbelief. Abel was put in a carriage and had been driven away from the Cyrus Empire into a dungeon. Before they dropped him inside, his magic was also sealed so the new emperor could make sure that Abel won't come back after him. Once the carriage left, Abel tried to slam on the seal of the dungeon, but that was all to no avail. He realized that pretty quickly and he wondered whether or not that was the end of his path and he thought to himself how his main dream was that he wanted to do everything in his power to try and change the world for the better and he got a flash of memories from around 10 years before about how he fell and scraped his knee and how a little girl healed his injury. That girl's name was Anna and they were really close friends and Abel felt really safe around her as he knew that she would always heal him and Anna smiled as she liked to call herself a magician of justice. But as the previous events in Abel's life took a sharp turn for the worse, so did the events in his past. When Anna turned 9 years old, she was a victim of an abduction attempt from a human trafficking organization and when Anna struggled to put up a fight and when she tried to defend herself, she was killed. It was in the moment that Abel found out about that incident that he swore an oath to himself that he would give it his best to change the wicked ways of the world and that he would transform it into a place where sadness and pain don't exist and that he would take Anna's role as the magician of justice. It was really important for Abel to recollect those memories as that made his resolve strong once more and instead of despairing he became determined once again and he told himself that he could couldn't let himself die in such a place. He tried opening the door but that was impossible and he realized that the chains on his hands were sealing his magic away and he knew that if he wanted to live a little bit longer he needed to get rid of them. He quickly thought about everything he could do and only one option seemed viable and doable. Even though it was the most dangerous one, Abel decided that he would let the mana in his body run wild and uncontrolled. <sighs> I said Abel again. I'm sorry. I'm trying my best. If I sleep up, please forgive me. Now back to the story one more time. As he thought that it would surge through his body and that it would damage or possibly break the chains on his hands. Abel started channeling his mana and after some time he felt a crack on the chains which later on resulted into them being cracked open and Abel was really happy that his plan worked. His main problem was solved but he now had to come up with a way to deal with the sealed door in front of him and Abel stepped back to try and blast it open with a fireball when his spell made 
contact with the sealed doors, Abel could see some markings on it and he realized that it had a barrier that protected it from magic and as he started thinking how it would be highly unlikely that he would be able to break free with his magic, he heard a voice that asked him whether or not he desired power. Abel turned around as the voice was coming from the other side of the hole and he wanted to see who or what it was that was calling him even though he was also intrigued by the question as well. Abel stood a bit to think about the whole thing and even though it sounded and looked a bit sketchy, he thought to himself how he had no other choice but to try and see whether he could obtain a power that would help him escape the dungeon. When he decided to continue down the hall, he could sense how the mana in the dungeon was very thick and some people that weren't used to it would immediately faint. That made Abel think that the dungeon was an s rank dungeon and he explained that when a lot of mana was released in one instance, that would always result in a magic beast being born. A place where mana is thick, lots and lots of monsters spawn and therefore those places become dungeons and high rank dungeons like the one he was in, required from adventurers to form strong and proper parties that would be able to clear it. Abel had no other choice but to continue down through the hole all by himself and he wanted to know whether or not he would be able to clear it by himself. His first encounter was with a wolf, a snake and a baby dragon which Abel defeated with one spell, like a real G. Abel used a torch spell so he could see where he walked and he defeated one more monster soon after. After some more walking, our bro Abel stumbled upon a staircase that was leading downwards and when he climbed down he found himself in the deepest part of the whole dungeon. Just when he asked himself if there was a dungeon boss, Abel looked up and saw a huge shadow of a dragon that jumped in front of him. It wasn't just any type of a dragon, it was a block dragon and Abel heard that it was completely impossible to defeat it all alone as it required multiple very strong adventurers to bring such a beast down and Abel realized that that was the dungeon's boss. Abel had nothing else to lose and because of that he decided to attack first so he jumped forward towards the dragon. The dragon immediately started channeling its attack and after a brief amount of time it shot a huge blast at Abel who managed to cast a physical barrier to protect himself. The blast was so strong that Abel's barrier started to crack and when the dragon stopped for a breather it couldn't locate Abel anywhere around itself. The dragon kept looking all over the place and Abel called out to the dragon from behind it. Abel busied himself by casting the ancient barrier all over the place and he threw the one that he had been holding in his hands as protection against the blast at the dragon. Abel landed on his knees and when he got up he proclaimed that it was time for his attack and he started shooting huge spears of light with a spell called the Holy Lance, that was simply too much for the dragon and Abel managed to defeat it rather easily. The only thing that could have gone bad was the fact that he used the physical barrier when the dragon attacked him as he had no time to cast the ancient one but in the end he managed to defeat the black dragon. Abel thought to himself that that should mean that the dungeon was cleared and when he decided to walk a bit more around the dungeon, he heard the same voice that called for him and asked him whether or not he wanted power. Abel turned around as he couldn't go against his interests and he proclaimed that he did all that for that power and he demanded it from the voice that tried to talk to him. The voice responded how he was a true magician and said that it was giving him immortality. Abel saw that in his status bar and he couldn't believe his eyes because he wasn't expecting such power. Immortality was great but what use did he had from being immortal as he was trapped inside a dungeon from which he was unable to escape. Immortality was great as it stopped the holder's aging and it healed all of his injuries almost instantly and those two aspects combined would grant the holder eternal existence. One more thing that was very specific was the fact that the holder of that spell couldn't get rid of it and Abel continued to walk through the dungeon in search of a way in which he could escape. Time was going by pretty fast and it was almost a year since Abel got the cursed power of immortality and he thought to himself how that was much worse than dying as he now knew that death was off limits for him. Abel spent the biggest portion of his time thinking about how he could leave the place and the remaining time he spent on defeating the monsters that would attack him from time to time. However, the 
monsters were so weak that Abel grew tired of that, but even though he was immortal, that never meant that he wouldn't go hungry, so when he first experienced hunger, he resorted to the only option he had, and that was eating the monsters that he killed in battle, whose taste was awful. On top of that, when it was time for him to sleep, he couldn't fall asleep at all as he was surrounded by growling monsters, and Abel thought to himself that he simply couldn't spend an eternity inside the dungeon. But despite his strong desire to exit the dungeon, no matter how much he tried or how long he searched for an exit, he simply couldn't find not even a single clue that could lead him to one. In one year that he was inside the dungeon, he searched it completely and he realized that the only place where he could make some improvements on his situation was the sealed door from the beginning. He came back to where it all started for him and he could see that the ancient barrier on the door was still as strong as ever and even the chains from his hands were still lying on the same place. Abel realized that he didn't have to worry about the monsters attacking him anymore as the chains hadn't been touched in a year and therefore he decided to give it his best to shoot some spells at the sealed doors. His spell certainly hit the barrier and at first it seemed like nothing happened but when Abel took a second glance at the barrier, he could see that one place had a visible crack. He realized that the barrier started to deteriorate after one year of suffering various attacks from different monsters and he thought to himself how he just might make it through with his magic. Abel fired another fire magic spell and when it hit the barrier, it made the barriers crack to expand even more, all the way until it cracked open, which made Abel smile with satisfaction. He was happy with the fact that he was finally going out from that smelly dungeon, and after he opened the doors, his face was in direct contact with sunlight, which made him question whether or not the sun had always been so bright like that. Abel quickly redirected his thoughts away from the sun, as he wanted to find a way in which he could escape the place. He thought that the best course of action for him would be to run away towards the kingdom of Leoria Forest, because he had heard that that kingdom was a meritocracy, that was the main reason, but he also had nothing that tied him to the Cyrus Empire that imprisoned him for life. Abel once again remembered his childhood friend Anna, and he determinedly stated that he would become the magician of justice, just like she used to call herself. Abel casted flight magic and he flew into the air. Before leaving, he turned around towards his old empire, and after thanking it for everything he was able to learn and achieve, he propelled himself in the opposite direction. After some time flying, Abel noticed a carriage that was being attacked, and he saw that the princess which was inside feared for her life, her butler tried to calm her down, but the princess was so afraid that she simply continued to scream and cry, and Abel couldn't stand to look at her tears, so he decided to land and help them. The first thing that Abel did was that he casted the ancient barrier around the carriage, so he could protect them from further attacks, and the guard that was outside was completely shocked when he saw Abel. Abel had no time to explain everything to the guard and he continued using his magic. The next spell he used was a spell for locating the enemies and with ease Abel was able to see that there were a total of 6 bandits that attacked them. Abel was certain that all of them were weak and he was certain that he would easily defeat them without much effort. He kept looking at the map from his previous skill and he did all his magic like that. He drew a magic circle on top of all of the enemies and once they were all locked in without the bandits ever being aware of what was going on, Abel casted his stun magic and knocked them all unconscious. Abel now explained to the guards that the bandits were out for 24 hours and he immediately rushed to help the guard that was wounded and that had arrows sticking from his body. Abel crouched and used his healing magic which both healed the guard's injuries and at the same time his magic completely disintegrated the arrows without him ever having to pull them out. The other guard was completely shocked and he asked Abel who he was after he used his healing magic and Abel explained that the way things were for the past year he was simply a fugitive. However the princess decided to open the door of her carriage and the first thing she did was that she scolded her guard for asking Abel such questions before they even had the chance to thank him properly for saving them. 
The guard immediately bowed down and apologized, and the princess then turned to Abel to introduce herself. She was the first princess of the kingdom of Leoria, where Abel was headed to, and her name was Elin Leoria. She thanked Abel for his help and for saving them, and her butler Jeffrey came out and expressed his gratitude together with the princess. Abel was a bit confused, as he could never think that the first thing he did once he got out from the dungeon was to help the princess of the place where he wanted to go to. Elin asked Abel for his name, as she wanted him to let them reward him properly for saving them, and when Abel introduced himself to her, he added that he was simply a magician that happened to be in their immediate surroundings, and that there was no need for a reward. Elin wasn't going to have it like that, and she insisted on offering Abel a full reward, because he had saved her life, and not rewarding him would bring shame and disgrace both to her and to her kingdom, and she invited Abel to ride on the carriage to Leoria with them. Abel thought a bit about her proposal and he said that he himself was on his way to Leoria, so he couldn't say no to such a request, even more so when it came from the princess herself. Eileen was really happy and she said that she couldn't wait to introduce Abel to her father, which made Abel really anxious as her father was the king. They drove for some time and when they entered the Leoria kingdom, Eileen pointed to the castle for Abel so he could see where they were headed. Once they entered the capital city, Abel commented how the whole place looked nice, which made Eileen really happy, but she said that it would be better if they continued with their conversation once they reached the royal palace. When they finally entered the castle, Abel was completely shocked with its size as it was a couple of times bigger and richer than the Cyrus Empire, and when Elin asked him what happened, he explained that he was simply nervous, as he was about to meet the king. Before they entered the king's office, Elin had one more thing to ask Abel, and that was why he was headed to Leoria in the first place, and he had no other choice but to tell her the whole story. Elin heard him out and she explained that she had heard only bad things about the new emperor in the Cyrus Empire, and Abel was really surprised to see that Elin Elin believed every word he said. Elin smiled and told him that the country of Leoria would never make him go through something so terrible, and by extending her hand towards him, Elin offered Abel a warm welcome to the meritocratic kingdom of Leoria. That made Abel smile, and he shook her hand and thanked right before the king joined them. The king was already notified about what had happened, and he told Abel that they were going to gift him something as a token of gratitude, and his only job was that he needed to pick whether that was going to be a noble title, or a house, or anything for that matter, which left Abel a bit confused, as he wasn't expecting something huge. The king took Abel to his office, and now that the three of them were all alone, he took that chance to thank Abel once again for saving his daughter. Abel tried to explain how that was only the right thing to do and that anyone who had any decency in them would do the same and the king told him that he needn't act so humble in front of him. The king realized that he hadn't introduced himself and his name was Eldoret Leoria and Elin enthusiastically shared her amazement of Abel and his skills. Abel tried to explain that he wasn't as amazing as she thought, and Ellen angrily told him not to belittle his powers. She then continued by saying how graciously he landed from the sky and protected them with various spells, which reminded her of a magician who was also called the Magician of Justice, Ark Sambel. The king was delighted to hear that and Abel was confused, as the person that Elin had just mentioned was actually his master and that information completely shocked both the king and his daughter. The king then explained that Ark Sambal was actually a legendary magician that served the kingdom of Leoria. Leoria had a lot of problems and he was someone who ignored all the social norms and that was actually the only way in which he could actually help the people and Ark Sambal was like a solution to all their problems. Because of his acts of service towards the kingdom and its people, they decided to raise a statue in his honor and call him the Magician of Justice. The king explained how he only heard of rumors of Ark Sambel having a student, and he thought to himself how if Abel saved his daughter, that could only be explained through fate, and Elin explained that she never thought that Abel would be the student of the savior of the Leoria kingdom, and Abel explained that even though he heard that his master died, he never could have guessed that he did such a thing, 
That was just another reason why the king wanted to express his thanks to Abel and he told him that he could wish for whatever he wanted and that it shall be granted to him and Abel tried to explain how he hadn't saved Elin expecting a reward. The king looked at how modest Abel appeared and he started liking him even more and he explained that because he was royalty he couldn't simply not gift something to the person that saved his daughter and he once again asked Abel whether there was anything his heart desired, Abel thought a bit about his wishes and after some thought he asked the king if he could get him a license, he needed to become an adventurer because his ID from the Cyrus Empire couldn't be used. The king couldn't believe that that was the only thing Abel wanted and he told him that such a license required a dose of societal trust but considering that he was the person that saved Elin, the king told him that he could even grant him the status of a noble which Abel refused, that appealed to the king even more and he told Abel that he could stay the night in the castle as his license would be ready the following morning and Abel was taken to the guest room. The maid opened the doors and took her leave and Abel was left alone and in awe. He couldn't take his eyes off of the room's luxurious furniture. He immediately tried the bed and found out how comfortable it was. And once he lied down, he remembered how he met his master, Ark Sable. It was a rainy day and Abel was visiting a graveyard when his master found him. Abel explained that he was sad because he couldn't protect his friend Anna and he shouted out how he wanted to become so strong so that he could change the wicked world into something better, which Ark Sable really liked. He took off the hood from his head and told him that he won't be able to accomplish that with strength alone and he knew that Abel was fully aware of that. However, Ark Sable told Abel that if he wanted strength, he could come with him and he would teach him everything he knew. Thinking about his master, Abel fell asleep and the following morning he was woken up by Jeffrey who told him that his license had been finished. Jeffrey told Abel that he would escort him to the throne room and on their way there, Jeffrey explained that those licenses were usually issued by different adventurer guilds, but as that was a special occasion, the king would present Abel with his new license. Abel smiled as he got used to being treated so well, however he couldn't understand why the king was going out of his way to make it all look and appear special and Jeffrey explained that something like that never happened before. When they arrived in front of the throne room, Jeffrey turned around and asked Abel if he knew how he needed to act in front of the king when there was an audience around and Abel responded by saying how he was in the Cyrus Empire before and he believed that he would manage just fine. After that, Jeffrey ordered the maids to open the doors for Abel and he walked through. The throne room was already full of people and all eyes were fixed upon Abel. The king called him to step up and he added how he would lead the ceremony of awarding him the adventurer certificate. The king told Abel to raise his head and he proclaimed that because of his act of saving the princess, he was immediately promoted to an S-rank adventurer. The audience immediately erupted from the surprise and they commented how there were only around five such adventurers in the whole country and Abel must have been really strong and while they were applauding him, Abel was completely shocked as that was the least thing he wanted attention. Abel tried to protest but King Eldoret proclaimed that because he was now an S rank adventurer, he was going to be assigned a new name and Abel became known as the Magician of the Abyss. The king told him that he couldn't wait to see how he performed and Abel had no other options but to say that he accepted both his rank and his second name and that he would do his best. In the Cyrus Empire, the emperor was notified that Abel had somehow managed to escape the dungeon and the only thing that they knew was the fact that the barrier was broken and that the doors were opened. That information made the emperor worried as he thought that Abel would motivate younger mages to start a rebellion and that was the reason why he was imprisoned in the first place. The emperor feared that if others found out there could be even more trouble and he told his servant to issue a death penalty for Abel and that he should be located as soon as possible. He wanted him either dead or chained up. 
Even though the emperor's servant said that he would do as was asked of him, when he turned the corner into the hall, he thought to himself that the first stop for Abel would be the Leoria kingdom. But the servant wasn't talking badly about Abel. He was waiting for his return because the world he lived in became almost unbearable. And if there was a person that could fix it, that was most certainly our boy Abel. Abel became well known throughout the kingdom of Leoria, and the female slaves read about him in the newspapers and commented how great it would feel if he came and bought them. However, one slave wasn't sharing their enthusiasm, and she tried to communicate to others that people who bought slaves were terrible people. In the meantime, Abel was taken to his new residence, which the king assigned to him, and when he first laid his eyes on it, Abel was completely surprised with how big it was. When he entered the mansion, he was met by two people, a butler called James and the headmaid called Arya, who was in charge of almost everything in and around the house. Abel told them that he felt really happy for meeting them and James asked him if he had eaten or not because they had already prepared a meal for him and as they started walking towards the dining room, Abel thought to himself that he would never live long enough to see a day where he was living like a member of the upper classes. Abel was served the food as soon as he sat at the table and he was a bit shocked when he saw what they had prepared for him. As James told him that the food was prepared specially for his sake, Abel clapped his hands rather quickly and started eating. The food was so good that his eyes started sparkling and he told James that that was the best food he had ever tried, which made James really happy and satisfied. Arya brought the tea after Abel finished with his food and Abel explained that he could really use a teammate and James gave him two good options. The first option was that he could go to the nearest guild and search for someone there and the second option was the fact that he could go to the slave market and pick anyone he liked. James even told Abel that if he decided to go to the slave market, he had a friend which he could recommend to him and Abel thought about his options for a quick second. He wasn't really fond of the slave idea because he knew that slaves had their own reasons which may or may not always be logical and he also knew that slave owners first had to sign a contract with the government for every slave they sold so that the lives of the slaves were guaranteed for. Abel explained that he would wait with his decision and he thought to himself how the slave markets were an easy target for all sorts of kidnappings and taking into account that there exists a black market and various other illegal organizations, it would be best to tread carefully. Abel immediately remembered his childhood friend Anna as she fell victim to such a thing that made him think that he could actually find out some more information about the organization that had his friend killed and he told James that he would stop by his friend later on after he finished greeting everyone in the guild and James told Abel that he would notify his acquaintance. Abel thanked him and went to sleep as it got pretty late. The following morning, Abel went out into the city and his first stop was actually the Adventurer's Guild where the guild leader apologized to Abel for not coming to him as even the king decided to honor him with a special ceremony. Abel apologized as well because he didn't set an appointment beforehand and the guild master Hamlet told him that there were no S rank missions available at that moment and he swore that he would immediately notify Abel if something that might interest him showed up. Abel thanked the guild master and before he could leave, the guild master gave him his new ID card and seeing it made Abel both happy and a bit worried. He walked over to the notice board and after taking a quick look, he could see that there weren't any adventurers that he could work with on a day-to-day -day basis, as they were all lower in both power and status from him. Abel realized that going to the slave market James suggested would actually be a far better option and just when he was about to leave, Abel heard a big crowd of adventurers behind him talking about him. He couldn't stand there to listen to various compliments he was getting, so Abel quickly got out from the guild. Abel made his way to the slave market and he hoped that he could have someone that would suit his needs. Abel went inside and the shopkeeper told him that if he needed an adventure companion, they should have a look at some of the beastkin slaves he had and he took him to the so-called beast room. However, all the slaves in that room were dressed in a flirty way and they all looked at Abel like he was going to use them for some 
not safe for work actions, if you know what I mean. Abel told the shopkeeper that he wasn't looking for sex slaves and he asked if there were any others, but the shopkeeper wasn't really satisfied with them, so he said that he wouldn't recommend them to Abel. On their way to the other room, the shopkeeper explained that they had their license from the government, but they accepted all kinds of slaves so their work wasn't really that much appreciated. The shopkeeper told Abel that the slave he was about to show him cursed, and when he opened the doors, Abel saw a white-haired beast girl sitting on the floor, and she had an uncanny resemblance to his childhood friend Anna. The slave immediately got angry with Abel because of his facial expression, but he tried to explain that he wasn't a bad guy that normally visits slave shops, and that he was only shocked because she looked exactly like his childhood friend. The shopkeeper explained that the girl was poisoned and that she was probably going to die very soon, but Abel simply said that he was going to buy her, which shocked both the girl and the shopkeeper. Abel explained that he would deal with the poison and they immediately signed the buying contract. Other workers brought the girl and she tried to resist as she wasn't feeling very comfortable and Abel placed his hand on her head and after casting a healing spell, the girl immediately recovered her health and the rash disappeared from her body. The shopkeeper was completely shocked and the girl embarrassingly thanked Abel, who welcomed her not as his slave, but as his companion. That shocked her even more, and Abel used his appraisal to see her stats, and he saw that she suffered from the dragon's curse, and he knew that it must have been painful for her to endure such a thing. However, something else caught Abel's attention, as he could see that her class was the princess of a fallen country, Abel chose not to mention anything immediately, and he simply told the girl that her curse had been lifted, and the shopkeeper and his workers rejoiced over that fact, and while Abel tried to explain how every normal person would do the same, the girl thought to herself how kind Abel actually was, however she couldn't shake the doubt that he was only lying like the rest of the people that treated her poorly in the past, and she remembered the events that happened 10 years before in the country of Beastkin. She was still a child when her country was attacked and they were forced into the human trafficking business as slaves. She was used in all sorts of ways as a slave and once she had been inflicted with the poison, she was simply thrown away and rejected completely. She compared Abel to all those years of suffering and it was only normal that she felt anxious and concerned. She was aware of the fact that her curse had been lifted as she wasn't experiencing any pain anymore and she wondered whether or not not, she could trust Abel. The shopkeeper asked him if he could actually heal his other slaves and Abel explained that since he was the magician of justice, he felt that it was his duty to help make the world a better place and if that meant healing some slaves, he was most certainly going to do it. However, Abel quickly turned around to the girl he just healed and he hurriedly told her his name. The girl thought to herself that even though she knew nothing of Abel, she was aware that he had healed her and lifted her curse and she couldn't help but remember his words about them being companions instead of a slave and a master and that led her to believe that Abel was actually a person she could trust and by extending her hand to shake his, she introduced herself as Hannah Sharon and that was the gesture that told Abel that she was going to believe him, Hannah thought. To herself that she would always remember their handshake as she could never forget how warm and pleasant shaking hands with Abel felt. The shopkeeper interrupted their handshake by saying how they should start the contract ceremony and he pointed out the circle on the floor where Abel and Hannah needed to step into. Abel could see her slave mark on her neck and one of the workers told him to place a couple of blood drops on the symbol on Hannah's neck and when Abel did that, the mark shined after, completely absorbing his blood. The shopkeeper explained that the ceremony was thus over and Abel told him that if he needed his help once again, he could simply ask for his help and he would gladly come. Abel then turned to Hannah and told her that they were going home which made her so happy that she did something she hadn't in a long time. Hannah smiled from the bottom of her heart. 
they made their way back to Abel's new mansion and when they entered inside, they were welcomed by James and Arya. Abel thanked James for introducing him to his friend at the slave market and because Hannah didn't know how to act, she bowed down to James and Arya and Abel asked them to prepare a room for her. Arya said that she would show Hannah around the mansion and Abel noticed that she needed some reassurance, so he patted her on the shoulder to make her feel more comfortable. While Hannah and Arya were going through the mansion, Abel sat down to read a bit, but not for too long as Hannah came back to talk to him. Abel asked her what she thought about her room and Hannah enthusiastically explained that it was simply beautiful beautiful and Abel told her to have a seat across the table. Abel told her that he wanted her to be his main assistant and the work they were going to be involved in was going to be fighting monsters and therefore he asked her whether she had any experience with any weapons whatsoever. Hannah explained that she was confident in her skills with a one-handed sword and Abel was really satisfied with that as he could have her serve as his vanguard. Abel immediately suggested that they go shopping for a one-handed sword and after they found one that Hannah liked, they would have to buy her some new clothes as well. Hannah was still shy and Abel told her that that was necessary as they would be working together from then onwards and he explained that he wanted them to look like equals. Hannah still didn't know how to act properly around Abel or around others for that matter but she expressed her gratitude. Abel smiled kindly but James and Arya interrupted by goofing around. They were trying to lighten up the atmosphere so Hannah could feel a bit more comfortable. James added that he knew of a good place where they could find what they were looking for and Abel told them that they should immediately go. Hannah tried out a couple of swords but none of them felt right but she saw one which made her fall in love with it at first sight. They then went shopping for clothes and Hannah picked a shirt and a coat that covered her entire body. On their way back to the mansion, Abel was the one to carry all the things in his hands and Hannah apologized for causing trouble for him as she was still feeling like a burden but Abel reassured her once again by saying how everything was fine. Hannah explained that she still didn't know how to behave because that was actually the first time she was being treated like a normal person and she explained how good it felt. Hannah added that if it weren't for Abel, she would still think that the world was a harsh and a painful place and Abel thought to himself that she had something else she wanted to say and he was right. Hannah turned around to meet Abel head on and she kindly smiled and thanked him for picking her out of all the slaves at the slave market. Abel was surprised as he hadn't been expecting something like that and he explained that he was also thankful to her as he was really glad he met her. Later on that night, Abel sat at his balcony all alone and gazed upon the stars and while his eyes were fixed to the sky, he thought about his childhood friend and wondered if he could really become a magician of justice like he promised himself he would. Abel was soon interrupted by James who brought him a letter sent by the king. Abel immediately opened the letter as soon as he heard that it was from the king and it said that the king needed Abel's advice on a matter that was urgent and Abel was being called to the royal palace the following morning. That intrigued Abel very much and he couldn't help but think about what the king wanted to hear his opinion on. Back in the Cyrus Empire, the emperor found out that Abel had gone to the Leoria kingdom and that the king made him an S-rank adventurer. That information worried the emperor as he couldn't believe that Abel would manage to improve his situation so much in such a short time and the servant that secretly cared about Abel asked the emperor about what he planned to do. The emperor explained how imprisoning Abel into the dungeon and sealing his magic away for good was enough as a threat but now everything was different as he was under the protection of the Leoria kingdom and the possibility of war was imminent. The emperor himself was left without a proper solution and that made him even more worried. After some time thinking, he told his servant that for the time being they won't be doing anything and that he should report back to him as soon as he found out some new information. The servant thought to himself how his actions made it possible for Abel to escape the dungeon as he was the one that convinced the emperor that the ancient barrier would work just fine in keeping Abel locked in the dungeon forever. 
The servant himself was a bit shocked by how smooth everything was going, but that made him really happy and he couldn't wait to see what Abel would do next. In the meantime, in the Leoria kingdom, Abel went to the royal palace together with Hannah. The king noticed that Abel wasn't alone and he had already heard about him buying a slave called Hannah, so he introduced himself as not to be rude. King Eldoret told her that she needn't act so stiff and he encouraged her by saying how he heard that she was a talented person and he even smiled at her and said that he was glad he could meet her so soon, which Hannah thanked him for. Abel thought to himself that the king already knew of Hannah's origin and Abel thought that Eldoret was really a fitting king for a meritocratic state because he really cared about his people's status. The king told them that he wasn't going to have small talk with them and he immediately cut to the chase. King Eldoret explained that he had his third night order fight and subdue some monsters in the east forest, but they were currently experiencing a lot of trouble and a lot of problems. Therefore, the king thought to himself how it would be good if he could send Abel down there to help them, and Abel was suspicious as he couldn't think of monsters that would make the elite knight order struggle like that. The king explained that it was also strange to him, but apparently the area around the forest was also damaged by the same monsters, and when he asked Abel once more whether or not he would help him, Abel proudly replied that he would go and see what he could do. The king thanked him and he took out two cards from his pocket, which neither Abel nor Hannah knew what they were. The king explained that those cards would let them go throughout the country without ever having to go through certain procedures that tend to be tiresome and long as it was actually proof that the royal family gave them permission to do whatever they wanted. On top of that, the king added that he started looking into various possible ways in which he could give Hannah the option of becoming an adventurer. Hannah immediately asked the king whether that wasn't prohibited and even though King Eldoret knew perfectly well that it was, he explained how he completely disagreed with those laws. The king explained that the country was divided in between the conservative opinion and those that think that everyone should be looked at individually and that based on their performance, they would either be accepted into or rejected from a guild. Therefore, the king explained that he decided to make Hannah's case a special one, just like he did with Abel, and to do that, he needed to show the people that Hannah is powerful and that she could be trusted, so he was sending them on the mission to help his third night order, and both Hannah and Abel took that very seriously. Abel and Hannah immediately set out, and Hannah was delighted with the king, and how kind he actually was towards him, he even went out of his way to try and help her, and Abel told her, that he might even abolish slavery altogether one day if he kept up with his actions. Abel thought to himself how slavery as a concept shouldn't exist at all, even when criminals were involved, and if slavery wasn't present, his childhood friend Anna would still be alive. Abolishing slavery, in Abel's opinion, would make the world a better place as it would erase a huge amount of sorrow and pain from the world. James, who has been driving the carriage, told Abel and Hannah that it would take them another half a day until they reached their destination, a small town called Berlon that was the closest to the East Forest so they could easily sleep and rest. Abel thought that was a good idea, but before he went to sleep, he decided to use his magic to see whether there were any enemies lurking by and he was shocked with what he saw as he could see that someone was being attacked by a dragon. Abel immediately jumped out of the carriage as he couldn't act like he hadn't seen anything. Meanwhile, a girl was being attacked by a couple of dragons and she was already at her limit. She tried attacking one of the dragons once more, but the dragon deflected her attack and slammed her into the ground. The girl was in a lot of pain, both physical from all the damage that the dragons inflicted upon her and the mental as she was nearing her end after coming so far. And when the dragon was about to land the killing blow, Abel jumped in front of the injured girl and stopped the dragon's attack by casting his severance barrier. Abel was really happy with the fact that he made it there in time 
time to save the girl and before he could introduce himself to her, Hana already attacked the dragon's back. She sliced one with grace after she landed next to the dragon and Abel saw that another one was trying to shoot her with one of its attacks. Abel casted his magic and told Hana to move to the side so he could shoot his fire bullets at the dragons. He managed to hit two of them but a couple of them still remained. However, Hana wasn't going to let herself lose any momentum and she immediately ran after the remaining dragons and slashed their necks in one attack. When they finished dealing with the dragons, the girl was amazed with how well the two of them were coordinated and Abel turned around to heal her injuries. The girl felt really good immediately after Abel used his restoration magic and she introduced herself as a knight from the Imperial Guards of the Cyrus Empire and her name was Misa Flamen. She wanted to thank them for saving her life, but when Abel heard that she was from the Empire, he immediately thought to himself that it wouldn't really be a good idea to stick around her, because sooner or later the Empire and the Kingdom would clash, and knights were super proud. However, Abel did think that it was a good thing that they saved her life, because it wouldn't be bad to have her indebted to him in some way. So he introduced himself, but he asked her if she could wait with repaying them for saving her life as he could be in a tight spot in the near future, and Misa accepted his request. She promised to fight for him whenever he needed her too. When Abel and Hannah left, Misa thought to herself how she must have heard Abel's name before and after, giving it some thought. She realized that the previous duke mentioned his name, and she realized that Abel was actually a great magician. Finding out about his identity made her happy as she was indebted to an incredible person. Person. Abel and Hannah finally arrived at the small town of Berlon and they immediately went straight into the guild. Abel explained that they were there on the king's orders and he showed the receptionist the special card they had gotten from King Eldoret. They were immediately taken to the guildmaster's office and once they entered, the guildmaster Camilla thanked them for coming and asked them to sit down so she could brief them on the situation. Abel thought about why the knight order was being pushed back and about the fact that high-ranked monsters were appearing all the time. To make matters even worse, the place was filled with newbie adventurers that made it all the more difficult to try and hold the entire situation under control. Abel knew that beginner adventurers could feel overwhelmed by the simplest of tasks, not to talk about monsters that they couldn't defeat in their dreams. Abel stated that he understood the situation perfectly well and he said that he would do his best to help. Abel and Hannah finally arrived at the East Forest and Abel warned her to be on her toes. However, he could sense a dense mana concentration, which he didn't think was normal because the output he was sensing was five times stronger than the usual one. Abel thought to himself about all the possible reasons why that would be like that and when he saw the monster the Knight Order was up against, he realized that the monster could be responsible for that. The Knight Order tried to warn both Abel and Hana to back off as that monster was extremely dangerous, but Abel told Hana to deal with it. She immediately jumped at the monster and before she could slash it, the monster knocked her back in a way that Abel had to jump up to catch her. She was alright and Abel was happy with her work as her attack attempt had created an opening which they could use to attack the monster and actually hit. Abel took his time to cast a huge fireball spell called the explosion, which he fired straight at the monster and just with that Abel defeated the monster that the Knight Order had struggled so much with and before Abel talked to them about anything, he stated how he first wanted to treat everyone who was injured. It would of course be a bore to go from one person to another to heal them, but our bro had a spell for that as well. He had an area spell called Area Heal with which he healed a lot of people at the same time within an area. The man in charge of the Knight Order asked Abel if he and Hana were sent by the king and Abel told him that he was correct. The man thanked them and he introduced himself as the vice captain of the third knight order. However, the man had something else he wanted to ask Abel and Hannah and their job wasn't finished there. They all returned back to the guild to have a festive celebration 
for the subjugation of the monster and while everyone was enjoying in the food and drinks, a man came up to Abel and the guildmaster, Camilla, and the man was none other than Count Dion Berlon, the lord who was in charge of the town of Berlon. He came to apologize to Abel for not being able to greet him earlier and he thanked him for his help in defeating the monster. The guildmaster, Camilla, was also surprised with how quickly Abel and Hannah managed to defeat the monster and Abel shyly explained that everyone took part in defeating it. While everyone was laughing and drinking, Abel thought to himself how the kingdom of Leoria was on the right path as it celebrated hard work and effort and therefore many talented individuals could come together and grow and prosper in a healthy environment. Abel could clearly see the difference between the Leoria kingdom and the Cyrus empire that took the first chance to cast away someone strong and powerful and that's the main reason why even normal people in Leoria appeared happier and livelier. Abel and Hannah got in their carriage and on their way back, Hannah said how the whole banquet was good and Abel laughingly agreed with her. Abel also hoped that everything would be okay on their way back home and after a while he thought to himself that it suddenly became a bit too quiet. He got a strange feeling like they had entered into an area that was devoid of life and Abel thought to himself that they must have passed through a clearing barrier. The carriage stopped and Abel and Hannah got out to check up with James and to see what happened. Their way was blocked by a group of bandits that were led by a guy wearing some glasses. Abel explained that he could use his skills to nullify any barrier and the guy with the glasses mocked him because he thought that Abel was only acting smart and bluffing. However, Abel once again kindly asked them to clear the way so they could pass but the guy simply said that they would have to die simply because they had seen them and they knew what they looked like. The bandit group immediately jumped at Abel and Hannah and gratefully Abel reacted quickly and used his thunderbolt spell to zap them all. The glasses guy was shocked because he had never seen such powerful magic with such a short chant and cost time and Abel ordered Hannah to deal with two other bandits. Hannah jumped at them and she managed to block one attack with her sword and the other with her sword's sheath. The glasses guy realized that they had lost the fight before it even started but he thought that if he could close the distance between him and Abel that he could harm him but that was just what Abel wanted as he grinned when the guy attacked him. Abel knocked out his dagger from his hand and he explained that even though he was a magician he was also trained in hand to hand combat which the guy realized a bit too late. However, the guy with the glasses had a smoke bomb which was something that Abel didn't expect and before Abel remembered to blow the smoke away with his wind blast, the guy ran away and he couldn't even locate the guy using his detection magic. Hannah asked Abel if they should chase after him but Abel said that it was fine and that the guards in the town would probably catch him. Once they got back onto the carriage, Abel couldn't help himself but think what those guys were searching in such a place and he decided that he would come back later on to check. Once they came back to the mansion, Arya greeted them and James explained that there was a red-haired man and a woman that came to ask about Abel. James immediately recognized that they weren't from the kingdom of Leoria and Abel immediately started suspecting that the Cyrus Empire sent out spies to look after him. Meanwhile, back in an underground prison in the Cyrus Empire, one emperor's servant came to notify the emperor's hitmen that the emperor had a job for them. Their names were Maria and Kagaro and they were shown Abel's photograph. Kagero took his photo to inspect it a bit more closely as he was excited to go out once again as it had been a long time since he and Maria had had a job. While Kagero was super excited about the job, Maria felt anxious but she decided not to speak about her concerns. Abel immediately got inside a hot bath and he thought about the mission they just finished which was also his first ever mission since he got to Leoria. He saved Misa who was a knight in the Cyrus Empire and after defeating the monster which was the main goal of his mission, he also encountered a mysterious bandit group on his way back home. The journey was long 
strong and intense, and the bath was just what he needed. However, Abel thought about the people that came looking for him, and he remembered how while he was still in the Cyrus Empire, he had heard some rumors about how the Emperor had hired assassins working for him, and he thought that they were actually the ones that killed the previous Emperor. Abel thought to himself that he might be a target as well, and if that was the case, he couldn't understand why they would come to his house, but Abel's thoughts were interrupted when Hana walked into the bath to join him. She explained that she wanted to wash his back, as that was also the duty of a slave, and Abel freaked out and said that she didn't need to do such things as they were on equal footing. Hannah thought that all men liked such things, and Abel explained that even though that was true for the majority of men, he wasn't one of them. Hannah then did the exact opposite of what Abel wanted. She undressed herself completely as he just said that they were equals and that completely freaked Abel out. Once he got out, he crashed onto his bed and he thought to himself how he needed to warn Hana not to act like that anymore. He heard a knock on his door and Arya came inside immediately after. She apologized for interrupting him, but she explained that she wanted to give him a massage since he looked extremely tired ever since he got back from the mission. Abel thought to himself that that was a good idea and Arya told him to lie face down onto his bed. She started rubbing him and while she massaged Abel, she went on to tell him everything about what happened while he was gone. She said that the people that came looking for him immediately turned around as soon as she told them that he wasn't present and Abel explained that he suspected that they wanted to kill him, which completely shocked and scared Arya. Abel said that he would be fine and that he could deal with them easily, but he was more concerned about Arya and James. Arya thanked him for his concern. But she reassured Abel that her and James could take care of themselves. Arya explained that because of Abel's master Ark Sambel, that the kingdom of Leoria was heading towards peace. Abel knew that what she said was true and he thought to himself how every country in the world should strive for peace. However, Abel remembered what happened to his childhood friend Anna and he immediately realized that he couldn't let such things happen again. Meanwhile, in the living room, James was cleaning the tables and Hannah came up to him. She explained what happened in the bath and James told her that that wasn't nothing to be concerned about as Abel was only shy. James added that he was only captivated by her beauty and her fine figure and that made her really happy as Abel was the first individual to treat her as a person. James explained that he was really extraordinary and that he made him believe that world peace was something achievable. James explained that before serving Abel, he had worked at the royal palace and he even considered resigning because he was getting old. However, James explained that when he heard about Abel, he wanted to try working for him because he was the student of the man that saved that kingdom and Abel actually saved the princess. James explained that he immediately knew that Abel was going to do grand things in life and Hannah didn't know any of those details and that only increased her amazement with Abel. Both Hannah and James couldn't wait to see all the good and beautiful things that Abel was going to do. The following day, Abel and Hannah left the mansion to make their report to the king about their mission in the East Forest and James and Arya bid them farewell. And we're gonna end it here for now, bros. Thank you so much for watching. As always, my brain is dead. I've been working on anime and manga recaps a lot, but I can't lie. I've been playing this dungeon, what, what's it called? Deep Rock Survivor game the entire night. I slept only four hours because I played this game. So yeah, I'm tired. Videos are of lesser quality because I was irresponsible last night. I hope you understand. Thank you so much for watching. As always, always stay awesome like this, bros. And peace.